Hello and uh, welcome to this week's episode of The Good Gram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, this week uh, we're having a look at um, six brand new releases. Well, I say brand new, they're kind of last, released over the last few months. There seem to have been quite a number of new releases over, over the last couple of months and um, I'd love to have crammed them all into uh, episode before Christmas um, because there's been some really stunning stuff released. Um, but unfortunately that <laughs> ain't going to happen. Um, I guess this today's episode of the show you would call kind of like the pre-Christmas show. Um, as as long-term viewers of the show will know, um, this time of the year I have to do my, my fair share of weekend work as, um, as we're open seven days a week. So I'm guessing this is, if I can get one more episode of the show in um, before Christmas then I will certainly attempt to do so. So... Uh, in essence, this is a look at um, some relatively affordable new releases. So, if you're looking for something a little bit, a little bit more expensive than your usual um, tipple for Christmas, hopefully one of these will um, fit the bill. Ranging from mm, thirty-eight to about sort of fifty-five pounds. So, you know, they are at the affordable end of the spectrum. And um, hopefully, if I get to do one more episode before the show, we will do some. Um, less affordable bottlings I think um, it, as, as seems to be the, the tradition now uh, at Christmas um, I always like to have a look at ridiculously expensive bottlings that are way out of my price range but um, I, I get the opportunity to taste them so anyway but no uh, back to today so first off a big big thank you to um, three distilleries for samples uh, for this week's episode of the show especially Aaron who, who, who seem to be incredibly generous and always send me full bottles I mean Lucky me. Uh, so, um, anyway, like I said, these have all been sort of released fairly fairly recently, and um, I, I guess you just want me to tell you what I'll be tasting today. Right, okay, so I'm going to kick off with the first of the two new releases from the Ben Romack distillery. Now, interesting enough, this is uh, a triple distilled whiskey. Now, um, it seems to me that sort of, I wouldn't say fads, but, but sort of things tend to go in cycles. I mean, not so long ago, everybody seemed to be doing uh, a bottling that had been um, finished or aged in virgin American oak. There seemed to be a huge rash of those. And now we've got several that seem to have cropped up that have been triple distilled. And, uh, you know, so it's interesting. Um, and it, it kind of shines a, a different light, I suppose, on the distillery. And uh, um, when you think about it, I mean, this this... The, the triple distilled was um, uh, distilled in 2009. You know, the distilleries have to have a sort of a bit of foresight into um, what they're planning to do. I don't know whether they they all talk to each other or or that kind of thing, but uh, these these things seem to sort of kind of go in cycles. So anyway, this is the the triple distilled Ben Romac. Um, it retails for around about 44 pounds. Uh, like I said, distilled in 2009 and bottled uh, this year. Uh, making it eight years old and bottled at 50%. So I think that'll be a, a nice one to kick off with. The second one we're looking at is bottling number three in the Bothy series, which, funnily enough, I was just talking about virgin oak. Um, this is basically um, aged in uh, American oak and then finished in, uh, in quarter casks, virgin oak quarter casks, I think, for around about 18 months or so. Uh, this was distilled, um, well, it was bottled, I should say, in uh, September of, of this year at 53.2%. Um, don't know when it was distilled, but uh, I don't think it was particularly old. And I certainly remember the last two bottlings being incredibly nice. So I'm um, hoping number three is uh, equally as pleasant. And uh, the third bottling we'll be looking at today is the new vintage Ag Knock. This is the 2002, which replaces the... 2001, funnily enough, um, bottled at 46%. Uh, I believe this is about, about 14, 15 years old. I don't know the exact months when it was distilled and released, but um, obviously 02, 17, it's going to be about that sort of age. So, uh, And I think this is the most expensive, yeah, I'm pretty certain it's the most expensive bottling in today's lineup and that's only 55 quid I mean you know okay 55 quid might sound a lot to, to some people but um, for a good whiskey I think that's still pretty good value for money Ooh, did I say good whiskey <gasps> anyway <laughs> moving on to the second of the Ben Romat bottlings this is um, the Chateau Sissac finish uh, 
bottling again distilled in 2009 so eight years old I think they've kind of um, well, they've kind of stretched the definition of finishing considering it spent 25 months uh, since but well, it spent six months in um, American oak before another 25 months in uh, uh, in Sisak casks so um, yeah that's kind of normally you'd expect finishing to be a slightly shorter period of time than the actual maturing in American oak but I suppose that it's, it's sort of what de defines a finish anyway so this is bottled uh, at 45% and um, is uh, about, about, you know, it's about 40 quid um, online I think sort of 38, 39, 95 something, something of that ilk and then we're going to look at two peated ones. This, the first, uh, is another agnock. This is what they've called peat heart. Now this replaces the um, range that they had. Uh, they've been bottling uh, of their peated malts, which are cutter, flutter, rotter, all that kind of kind of stuff. Um, and they've kind of changed, well, changed, moved the goalposts a bit from where the original, uh, the earlier bottlings were around about eleven to sort of I don't know, twenty odd parts per million they've really ramped up the peat on this to 44 parts per million um, and um, well first off I'm not really overly keen on the name now I, I mean I guess the, th the problem was always going to be that there ain't that many tools associated with peat cutting so you're going to run out of names before too long uh, and although I love the bottle I love the black bottle of the eagle I love all of that kind of stuff I'm just Pete Hart. I'm not not so sure about. I mean, now they did do a bottling purely for the European market called Pete Lands, and that would have made a lot more sense if you were going to have you know um, a, a, a bottling uh, of, of this kind of type. Yeah, Pete Lands is a more sort of obvious kind of kind of name. Pete Hart, part of the Pete. I mean, that, uh, I mean, yeah, all right. You can argue that when you cut the peat out and you can take the heart out of it to do the peating but uh, I think that's, that's kind of being a little bit tenuous but anyway um, we're not really that concerned about the name at the end of the day it just just struck me as a bit of a bit of an odd name shall we say I'm sure there have been odder names uh, for, for whiskies but uh, anyway so this is bottled at 46 percent and uh, like I said been been uh, peated to about sort of 44 parts per million so uh, we'll see how that one because part of the thing that I loved about the earlier bottlings was that the, the, the light peat didn't swamp the character of the spirit and you know, Agnock has got a lovely character has to be said at the end of the day and finally we're going to be looking at uh, this baby this is the eighth release in the Macri Moore 46% uh, bottling series and um, it's bottled of 46% and it's you know it's peated Aaron so uh, it tends to be uh, I think sort of quite um, quite a quite pleasant bottling. Uh, I've not really had any issues with it over the past. The peating level in them does tend to be relatively variable, it has to be said. Um, but aside from that, I think the quality has always been really good. So uh, I can't see them any issue with this particular bottling either. So anyway, I think that's uh, that's enough waffling and uh, introduction. I think it's. Uh, Right, okay, so let's kick off with the triple distilled Ben Romag. Let's see what those gives us on this one, shall we? Lovely, elegant, almost florally kind of barley. Um, really fresh. I mean, when, I remember when I tasted this for the for the first time, my immediate thoughts were it's very much like uh, the triple distilled English whiskey. Um, it has that lovely light barley character, the elegance, bit of white fruit, a little bit of little bit of spice there, just sort of lurking in the background. Um, yeah, I mean this is a, an absolutely lovely whiskey, and it just shows you know Ben Romack in a completely different different light. Quality is absolutely fantastic, really nice. Yeah, and it's it's. It's nice to see it without uh, without any sherry and you know, there's no real peat smoke um, in there at all. Um, I mean, the, the ten-year-old um, Ben Romack has always been a been a, a go-to whiskey for for its price in in the shop because it um, 
it's just such an all-round really nice whiskey and uh, this is uh, this is absolutely gorgeous really nice Let's see what no palette gives us out Mm. Again, elegant, light, but loads and loads of barley character. A um, little bit of spice, a bit of a kick on the finish, um, but that's what you would expect with 50%. And I think it works really nicely at 50%. It just give, seems to give it that extra intensity, and maybe it's kind of because the triple distilling of the spirit has probably not made it it's made it a little bit more neutral I mean it's not a neutral spirit by um, any stretch of the imagination it's got loads of character uh, it's not majorly majorly complex and the, the 50% um, ABV is certainly just giving it a punch a bit of intensity certainly on the finish maybe just sort of bringing up those spices uh, the wood spices a little bit a um, little bit of creamy oak as well on the finish I mean that's that's a lovely whiskey all round really really nice delicate elegant um, if you love your spays, I mean, I'm not saying this isn't a spay, because it is obviously a spay, but if you love your spays, classic spays, you know, the, the crisp style, the minerally sort of slightly grassy style, then certainly you're going to really, really like this. I think this is um, uh, absolutely fantastic. So, um, nice stuff. <laughs>
the distillery have got the use of American oak and cherry casks just absolutely spot on. Um, so you're getting all, quite a mature nose in actual fact for, for, for its age. Um, the, 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 there's sort of baked apricots and apple, and dusty uh, oak, a little bit of vanilla as well. And then that subtle dried sherry fruit just comes through really gently, unwinding. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the longer you kind of leave it in the glass, the, the sherry does start to become a bit more noticeable. But even so, the balance on this is absolutely superb. Um, and this is just how I like my sherry. Just a smidge, just adding a little nuance to the, to the whiskey. Um, touch of, of, of granity minerals kind of comes through it's got a got a quite a fresh uh, edge to uh, to the malt so I mean all around this is just absolutely lovely really complex um, absolutely fantastic really nice whiskey Let's see what the palate gives us then shall we The cherry is a little bit more noticeable on the palate, but not by a huge degree, it has to be said. That lovely sort of dried fruit, um, slight sort of pruniness kind of comes through fairly quickly, but it does open up with the sort of like the barley, slightly baked fruit, apricot, apple, vanilla, and then the sherry starts to come through with the, with the dried fruit and a little bit of spice, um, and it kind of comes comes to the sort of finish with a quite a sort of like a not citrus but again a more granity sort of minerally kind of fresh uh, finish it's just got such a lovely progression that is just such a gorgeous whiskey it has to be said and um, mm, like I said the, the, the balance is just uh, key when uh, I think using sherry and, uh, and certainly Agnock have uh, seem to just do that so so well so yeah mm, hats off brilliant whiskey Right, okay, so let's move on to the second of the Ben Romax. This is the Chateau Sissac finish. Now, Chateau Sissac um, is uh, a Bordeaux Chateau. I forget where it is. I mean, we don't deal in Bordeaux, so all this left bank, right bank business just kind of like, oh. But anyway, it doesn't really matter where the hell it's from, does it? Actually, let's see what influence it has uh, on the whiskey. Smoky bacon. Um... Yeah, smoky bacon. Um, slightly sort of tarry, sort of maybe more treacle than tar, sort of in that kind of sort of style. Winy red fruits, ever so slightly butric, um, but nothing to sort of like get bent out of shape about. Quite nicely balanced, there's certainly some barley character, there's a bit of American oak, um, although not a huge amount, there's just a sort of an intimation of, uh, of vanilla but yeah so the the, the finishing cask is, is the more dominant but it's still surprisingly well balanced um, yeah just smoky bacon I just can't get past I'm desperately trying to get past the smoky bacon note and um, yeah I mean it's just uh, I mean it's just yeah, pleasant whiskey nice nicely balanced um, Certainly the nose is, is pleasant, isn't it? Well, I say there's no real off notes. I mean, it's it's not really an off note. It's just you often tend to pick up a little bit of butric note, um, mainly more with uh, ex-Italian um, wine cast more than anything else. But it kind of all adds to the funkiness, I think. So, uh, hmm, yeah. So it passes like. Yep, a lot of wine cask, but again, you do get a little bit of the sort of like the, the barley and spirit character sort of on the finish. Kicks off with the sort of winy red fruits, dry, dusty, sort of slightly tannicky kind of red fruits, and again, a slight sort of smoky meatiness. Um, 
little bit of vanilla kind of comes through on the finish with a bit of spices and a little drying it has to be said but again um, quite nicely balanced it's got a, again that sort of slightly kind of treacly tarry kind of axis kind of happening um, on the aftertaste it's not too bad at all I mean um, of the of the two sort of Ben Romex I certainly love the um, the, 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 the triple distill I'm less kind of overly enamoured by that but it's certainly not a bad whiskey and if you like wine finished whiskies and it's you know again I mean it's you know 38 39 pounds I mean that's 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 a you know pretty good value for money I think so um so yeah nice Right, okay, so let's move on to the first of the two peated malts. So this is the Agnock Peat Heart. Um, see what those give us. I mean, did, how do I how do I say this? I mean, it's 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 a nice whiskey. It is a, a lovely whiskey. There is there's some white fruits. There's some almost kind of tropical notes um, but the peat is very almost islery um, and now this is the, the, the thing that I found with the peated spays and the Ben Romac peat smoke it went exactly the same way they started off with a low level peating uh, and it had a, a, a distinctive highland peat character it was dry it was dusty it was very subtle and it didn't over impinge too much uh, on the character of the spirit and exactly the same thing with the agnoc it had a lovely gentle delicate peatiness and this is kind of almost like sort of colila i mean um or it's possibly a little bit more fruity yes i'm getting that sort of almost kind of tropical kind of um fruit notes but it's to me it's too heavily peated i mean i love peated malts i can see why they've done it people love big relatively big peated whiskies um and i guess if you're you know if you're looking at it as a standalone whiskey if you're sort of like ignoring the fact that it's you know where where its dna i suppose has come from you go yeah okay nice whiskey pleasant little bit of fruit smells like colila and uh, um and this is the this is the issue what I have have with with this. That after a while, you know, they start off using a low level peating, and then suddenly they just they just get this obsession that has to ramp everything up. The English whiskey distillery have done it. Their chapter fifteen is just like bloody coal ela. Um, peat smoke has gone exactly the same way, and now agnot has gone that way as well. Um, I, 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 you know, I like I say I don't dislike it, it's not a bad whiskey, it is just not what it was, not what it was supposed to be, uh, if you see what I mean. Um, yeah, if you wanted to do a heavily sort of peated whiskey, then do it as a kind of one-off, something different. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping that, I know this whole peat heart thing range is now going to be edition one, two, three, and four, etc., etc., and I'm hoping that they will kind of just dial down the peating levels, you know, because it does seem to sort of detract from the character of the spirit, you know, because, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, you're probably thinking I'm just being overly, overly critical. Um, and, may, you know, like I said, you know, if you if you look at this in isolation as, as a whiskey in its own right, lovely whiskey. But I think I personally preferred the earlier, earlier bottlings. But anyway, let's see what the palette's like on this then, shall we? That opens up with some lovely fruit, you know, apricot, peach, pear, slightly tropical, a um, little bit of creamy oak, and then in comes that pea, um, almost medicinally, very islery, quite salty in actual fact, and um, and that kind of like lingers throughout the end. So, you know, looking at, like I said, looking at it as a whiskey in its own right, absolutely gorgeous, no problem at all with it. It's um, just like I said, it's just sort of, I personally preferred the earlier releases when the, the, the emphasis was less about the peat and just adding that sort of little bit of smokiness um, 
But, you know, I mean, I like that. I mean, I'd quite happily drink that, and I bought it, you know, it's, it's you know, in stock, um, because I think it's a, it's a great whiskey, it's lovely. Uh, and if you like this kind of style of whiskey, you're just going to go sort of ape for it, you know. Um, it's just, I have an issue with the peating levels, and I certainly have an issue with the name. I really don't like the name at all, but, and I know the guys at the distillery are going to be watching this, and they're probably going to be crosshairs there, you know, sort of get the gun out. Um, but, you know, just just being completely honest, I think, I think the name is, oh, well, anyway, that's uh, enough, of, enough criticism, I think. Let's move on. Right, okay, and on to the final whiskey of the day. This is the Aaron Macrimore 8th release. Let's see what the uh, notes give us on this then, shall we? Fresh, crisp, lemony. Not as heavily peated uh, as, the, um, as the, the peat heart, but there's some lovely kind of slightly herbal peat. Bit of smoke, bit of peat dust. Yeah, it's not the sort of the, the heaviest peated Macri Moor I've uh, I've tasted, but it's certainly not the um, the lightest. It's got a a real sort of vibrancy to it, which uh, and sometimes peated Aaron can be a bit weird. It has to be said. Sometimes it does go a bit a bit funny um, and a bit sort of you know um, just weird sometimes. You know, a bit dirty. Um, shall we say? Uh, but I must admit that the Macri Moor has never really come across like that. I mean, it only tends to be independent bottlings, and maybe it's I don't know. But um, why am I? I just feel like I've just gone into sort of like uber criticism mode. Anyway, um, there's there's some lovely fruit to it. It's it, it's balanced. It's got some nice saltiness. It certainly doesn't smell like couple either. Um, it's just, yeah, it's lovely. Really nice. Lovely, lovely whiskey. Let's uh, see what, uh, what the palate gives. Full, malty. Quite a bit of an oak up, up first and then the peat starts to sort of move in in that sort of slightly smoky, earthy, edgy kind of kind of way. A um, bit of bitter chocolate on the finish. Um, vanilla again, kind of the oak starting to sort of come back again. Lovely progression, touch of citrus as well. You know, really nice and complex. Um, quite mouth watering, um, salty as you would expect. Um, yeah, that is a, that is a lovely, lovely whisky. And again, not too heavy on the peat, although the peat is obviously quite noticeable. And so it's all kind of quite nicely balanced in. Um, and yeah, really, very, very nice. So uh, yeah, another another really good bottling from Aaron. Right, okay, so let's uh, sum today's episode of the show up. Well. Um, Again, I would like to say a very, very big thank you to the, uh, the three distilleries for kindly sending me samples and um, hopefully they will carry on doing so um, because, uh, you know, I, I love all three of the distilleries. They're all producing some absolutely brilliant whiskies and uh, I've been, been a big fan of each of them for mm, quite a, a number of years, shall we say. And um, the triple distill, Ben Romack, I really like that. Ben Romack, different light. I, I love the whole triple distill kind of concept. Um, and certainly when it, when it sort of shows that, you know, um, triple distilling doesn't necessarily mean you end up with a completely and utterly neutral spirit, you just have something just completely different. Um, and I know there are a number of distilleries that do sort of two and a half times or two and three quarter time, times di distillation, all that kind of recycling of the, of the faints and the four shorts and all that kind of stuff, but it's really nice just to sort of see um, you know, distillery just, just, just doing something a bit different, which is really, really nice. Um, the boffy, yeah, I really like like that. I mean, yes, probably should have, yeah, should taste more oak. Uh, you know, when you think about, you know, how it's uh, how it's been sort of aged, you think, you know, this should be a complete and utter oak monster, but it isn't. It's really nicely balanced. It's all well contained, and um, yeah, again, I love the fact that the that the uh, 
the distillery are just sort of experimenting and trying different things and yeah I mean when you experiment you know some things will probably work and I imagine they've probably had a few like that that will probably never see the light of day it has to be said but you know it's nice to see that uh, a number of the experiments that they do do work so the Agnog O2 yep just absolutely kind of classic really really nice like I said when I was tasting it Agnock seemed to sort of do do the sherry bit quite nicely, really nicely balanced. Tastes probably a little bit older than 15 years, so it's got some lovely maturity. And uh, although we, we have, we're not stocking it at right at this moment, because I've still got some of the 2001, but you know, as soon as we've kind of moved through that one, we'll probably have it. But it's you know, widely available, I, I believe. Um, the Chateau Sissac uh, Ben Romac. Yeah, okay, as cask finishes go, it's certainly not too bad at all. Like I said, I think they're probably stretching the, the definition of the term finish to its uh, nth point, shall we say. But, you know, an interesting whiskey. Pleasant, um, not particularly expensive, pretty much does exactly what it says on the tin. And, um, well, you can't really argue with that at all. Uh, Agnock Pete Hart, well, I think I said quite fair and moan about that and like I said at the end of the day the whiskey itself is really really good quality absolutely nothing wrong with that at all uh, I mean, no need to go into the rest of it is there and the the Aaron the Macrimore yeah again another lovely Macrimore bottling and um, I know the Macrimore is popular I mean um, we sell a fair amount of it I mean Aaron itself is pretty popular and talking of Aaron if you happen to be in and around uh, the shop or in Nottingham on the God, is it the 21st? I think it's the 21st, I think. Um, it will probably be posted on, on our Facebook page or on, on, on the, the website. Um, uh, Sarah, the, uh, the, the rep from, um, from Aaron, or from Indie Brands, I should say, that represent Aaron and distribute Aaron, will be in the shop and hosting a tasting of the range. I don't know quite what she'll be bringing with her, but I imagine it will probably be hopefully most most of uh, of what we tend to stock and, and we stock a fair amount of our and you just go and have a look on the website and you'll see exactly what what what, what we've got so hopefully you know if you really like the sound of the the, the, the bothy and the macrimore hopefully um sarah will have samples of those with her and you will get to taste them as well and decide whether whether they are your kind of thing so so there we have it, that's this week's episode of the show, like I said, tacitly called um, the Affordable Whiskies of Christmas episode, I guess you would say, um, and hopefully the next episode of the show will be the Unaffordable Whiskies of Christmas, but anyway, until that time, um, I hope you've had... Um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the show. I hope you carry on watching into the new year. I'll carry on uh, doing episodes of the show as often as is humanely possible. And I know I've got some cracking episodes lined up for, for 2018. So uh, anyway, all that's left to say today is uh, good afternoon and good ramming. <laughs>